Welcome back to the Miami Heat Roundtable. My name is Amir, and I'm actually joined by the entire crew today. We have no guest for once. We've been putting in a lot of effort, obviously, trying to bring in great guests for you guys. But we wanted to do a throwback and just do the original four, the core four over here. And we wanted to give you an episode because there have been some interesting reports that have been coming out the past few days. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen it online. But what I'm referring to right now is Jimmy Butler and his looming extension. We knew that was going to be a big catalyst this offseason in terms of the direction that the Miami Heat may go uh, in terms of offseason trades. And so there's some noise out there that the 76ers, which we've known have been interested in potentially getting Jimmy Butler in a trade if they can't get Paul George. But they said something interesting yesterday. They said if they do get Jimmy, they're willing to give him a max. So if there is any drama with Jimmy Butler in the heat, they're going to come in, they're going to swoop in, and they, they potentially have a package, which we could talk about, boys. There's also another report that came out today that two unknown teams are also interested in giving Jimmy Butler the max. So this offseason can get really intriguing. Ernest, I'm going to start off with you. What are your thoughts with all this noise? And the second part of that question is, do you think either the Miami Heat would trade Jimmy Butler to the Sixers potentially? Or do you think Jimmy Butler potentially could request a trade? Just what are your thoughts on the whole scenario? Um, the whole thing about Philadelphia, I'm not surprised. Um, I, I don't know if you guys remember. We, we, we've talked about this before when Big O was on the channel and he was saying that there was no teams that would – be interested in Jimmy. I remember we even we talked about it in another round table that Philadelphia could be the team. And it makes a lot of sense. I mean, you have Jimmy Butler there. He's been there before. Joel Embiid is one of his close personal friends. Another player they don't really talk about, Kyle Lowry's there. Kyle Lowry's Jimmy Butler's best friend. So it's kind of a match made in heaven for Jimmy. Um, I don't know about the other teams. Like that report, I think that's just more speculation. If If I were to be honest, I think it's really just Philly because it makes sense. You know, you got Tyrese Maxey, you got Joel Embiid. Those are your stars. Jimmy Butler doesn't have to be the main guy. Um, he kind of gets to play a Scottie Pippen role, you know, and then that way, come playoff time, he can do what he needs to do when called upon. But with Maxey and Embiid, it's good enough. Um, do I think it's going to happen? Do I think Jimmy Butler is going to request a trade? Honestly, no. I don't think this is going to happen. Um, the only way it does happen you know, it's kind of like what you said, like they can't come into an agreement with the contract extension. Then he requests a trade. But I don't think the Heat are just going to send Jimmy to Philly if Philly's calling to trade for Jimmy because there's no incentive for Miami to trade Jimmy to Philly unless they're just trying to rebuild. And I don't think the Heat are looking to do that. Um, and then I think they may get like they, they could even possibly get a better package than what Philly can offer. So. I don't know. I mean, like, will it happen? Possibly, likely. I don't think so. I think the Heat are going to keep Jimmy. I think they feel that they have a championship team. They just got to retool around it and then see what you can do from there. What do you, as the follow up to that, real quick, and I'm going to ask the same question to the other guys. Would you want the Miami Heat to trade Jimmy Butler for any sort of package? Like, we know with Philly, the, the intriguing aspect is hey, we can give you three or four picks no players because they have the salary and you knock off 50 million off your books. You have all these assets, go build your team around bam. Hypothetically, the only way that would potentially happen is also if we know Donovan doesn't sign that extension. Cause it's like, okay, cool. Get those picks and we could trade one of Terry or Tyler and like a few picks for Donovan Mitchell. And then we have all that space to get that new third star for that third build. So I don't know. What's your opinion? focus on the one to two years we have left with Jimmy in this build or trade him to anywhere. It doesn't have to be for picks. We can go somewhere else to New York and actually get Randall and other players. So yeah. What would you prefer as a heat fan? Philly won't give up what I want. I want Maxi or, or MB for Jimmy. They won't do that. So killed the conversation right there. Um, now, if you don't have to make that trade now, this could be a trade before the season. You know, you can get your draft pick, try to make the move for Mitchell. If Mitchell signs a contract extension with Cleveland and if the Heat aren't able to make any moves and they feel, you know, this team just probably doesn't have it. Let's see what we got with Bam, Tyler, Nico, Jaime, you know, Terry Rozier and Duncan. 
trade Jimmy, get a bunch of draft picks, whether it's to Philadelphia or maybe to another team. Or maybe you could do a three-way trade. Maybe you can call Cleveland. Cleveland, Philly, and Miami, maybe a fourth team. Come up with a trade package that involves Jimmy. Get Donovan Mitchell to the Heat. And then that way you're able to send different assets, different draft picks. I don't know. There's going to be a lot of different options. But the cool thing is that, and it's all speculation right now because of what Keith Pompey said. But honestly, nothing's going to happen in the next few months. If a Jimmy Butler trade happens, it won't happen until right before training camp or maybe sometime during the season. I I, I just don't think it's going to happen. My, my, my honest opinion, I don't think it happens. I hear you. Trent, so we heard Jimmy has mentioned, Bernie Lee has mentioned, I want the max. I most likely want it from the Heat, basically. Like I, I, at the Grand Prix, whatever it was a few weeks ago, I want to retire in Miami. So we know he wants it from Miami. July 7th is the first day. And now we can totally expect that they're going to ask for it. And we know there's going to be a disconnect right now because of Pat Riley. He said, we don't have to do it now. We could take a wait and see approach, yada, yada, yada. What are your thoughts on just the situation in general? And then Philly, you know, coming in as a suitor possibly and willing to give that max deal to reunite with Jimmy. Well, first thing first, the 76ers are interested in everybody. All right. They're just looking for that third star off rip. So, like, Jimmy to the 76ers, there is some smoke there, but I'm not too, too worried because the 76ers talked about Paul George. They talked about Brandon Ingram. They talked about Zach Levine. They want to find that third star. They have a GM that's very, very aggressive that's going to go out and go get that guy. And their first option is always going to be PG. I don't even think it's Jimmy. Um, they want PG. And with Clippers' situation, I don't know what's going to happen with that. Um, with Jimmy... Do I think we pay him? I don't think we should pay him, but I think we will eventually pay him, right? I, I see both sides of it, right? You know, it, it's a successful era. We didn't win championships, but we did a lot with Jimmy Butler. You know, Eastern Conference Finals appearance, Finals appearance. Um, and so Jimmy's going to go, well, I did this, and I did that, and I did this, and I did that. And they can't argue with it. But also, you can look at Jimmy's side and be like, well, I did all this, but you didn't give me help. What help did you really give me? Like trading for a star play, they didn't really do that. Like you could say, well, we got undrafted player. They just played. They just played bet. Like the undrafted players just played well. No, but they, they did give him help though. Who's help? Kyle Lowry's they, not help. No, 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 no. And this is why. And, and see, I don't and want not to cut you out, but we don't hold Jimmy Butler. He, see, we don't hold him accountable for this. The two things that Jimmy Butler wanted was Kyle Lowry and PJ Tucker. The reason why PJ Tucker was great that it didn't work out is because Caleb Martin was able to get his minutes. But at the time, we got Kyle Lowry $90 million because of Jimmy Butler. And when Kyle Lowry was here, Jimmy Butler never held him accountable. And even when the Miami Heat were thinking about trading him, I don't know like, if you guys remember, Jimmy said in the press conference, Kyle Lowry ain't going nowhere. So we did get him help. It just did not work out. Because think about it, between Jimmy and Kyle Lowry, that's $120 million on our books. Mind you, Kyle Lowry... If you think Kyle Lowry and Tucker are cool, if he wanted those players, I know he wanted them. That that's not help. Kyle Lowry was out of his prime. He he was coming out of his prime during that's, that. But time. that's Jimmy Butler's fault. I get it, but I get it. But right, if you if all of us Heat fans can agree, Kyle Lowry, like we was excited to get him, but we was not getting the Kyle Lowry from Toronto. That just wasn't happening. So and PJ Tucker, um, is cool and all. I appreciate him, but that's not enough. Anyways, I'm gonna still finish my, what I gotta say. Um. I feel like I, I, I'm i seeing both sides, right? I'm just trying to look at, okay, Jimmy and his agent, what they're going to say, and then the front office side, what they're going to say and stuff like that. Um, So I think right now, like Ernest says, nothing's going to happen. This is all speculation. You got to think about it. There's nothing to talk about besides the playoffs, and we're just going into the finals real, real soon. So we're going to hit in the draft. We're hitting free agency, and then we're going to hit a blank spot. Like we're going to hit like summer league and stuff like that. So a lot of these speculations and rumors are just going to come up for clicks and views and stuff like that. At the end of the day, I think Jimmy eventually stays. Um, it's going to be it's gonna be tough. It's not going to be easy. I think there's there's definitely going to be conflict, 100%, because Jimmy's aging. Jimmy, the last couple seasons, have been injured. We've been playing teams for the last two years. Let's not forget that we made it to the playoffs. I mean, we made it to the finals, but we're still a playing team. We should not be a playing team with Jimmy being there. So there's just a lot to discuss, um, and I think they'll eventually figure it out. But, Martel, I think you brought this up or – um, Wes brought it up. Either way, we're screwed because we sign Jimmy, it holds us back. We yeah. don't sign him, we get worse. So it's like that. That's where we're at right now, and and that's what happens when 
you don't get the job done. And this is what happens when you don't take the regular season serious. Because if you take the regular season serious, Jimmy, I'm sure maybe never gets injured or he does. I don't know. But little things matter. So either way, we're kind of screwed. Well, let me look. Uh, I'm curious, Trent, because yep. you say if we lose Jim, Jimmy, we're worse. Yep. I'm curious because let me ask you this. Let's say the Heat lose Jimmy. We trade Jimmy. This is like a fantasy world. Yep. I still think this Heat team, like with Tyler, Bam, Jaime, Nico, all these guys, I think they can still make a playoff run. Maybe it's not the high seed that we think, but if we get Jimmy off our books and we're able to like clear our books for a year or two and get the star, I mean, do you think like at this team without Jimmy, do you think they can actually make the playoffs? No. But no. I do I do like your thing though. We need to clear the books. That's what we really need to do. You mm -hmm. clear the books. Like I think we just need a small read to. You clear the books because cap matters now with all these aprons and stuff like that. Yeah. And where we where we messed up was not really messed up because we still wanted to be aggressive. After we traded for Terry, it kind of changed a lot of things. We can't do a lot of things. There's a reason why Caleb's gone. There's a reason why Haywood Highsmith may be gone. So you going for Terry was okay. Like we're still going in. I still think we have one or two more years left. And after that, we got to figure out what we're doing. Um, so, I don't know. We're in a weird position. Um, still rocking heat, heat for life, of course. But, uh, you know, I, I, that's just personally my opinion. I got you. Martel, let me ask you this. So, of course, most of us think the Heat are eventually going to give Jimmy Butler an extension. And he's going to remain with the Heat, which I think is a good thing. We saw what happened in the playoffs when he wasn't there against Boston, right? Like, we got our ass beat. If we had Jimmy Butler, if we had Terry Rozier, and if we had Duncan, who played only 15, 20 minutes across five games, like, we could have competed. But anyway, what are your thoughts, though, in terms of us waiting a year? Do you think there's a chance Jimmy walks? Or do you think Jimmy will then renegotiate after one year pending – performance availability and all that stuff or do you see a world where if we don't offer him the contract extension before the season he can request a trade so what do you think is more likely he requests a trade or he walks away or he eventually just takes whatever he can get in terms of an extension um you know after after the year can i just say one thing i don't mean to cut you off it'll be very very quick also with all this smoke that's going around this is perfect for this is what the agents want they want the miami heat uh, organization and be like, oh my God, like if Jimmy uh, wants this money and we're not going to give him, there's teams that are going to want to offer it. And that forces Miami to be like, okay, now we have to kind of pivot. That's another thing that you do have to look at. Um, and this happens in all sports, football, um, you should know, Amir, um, yep. basketball, like it, it happens. That's a tactic that they, they do, but continue. So pretty much it comes all down to Jimmy Butler. So what I mean by that is we are always going to go as far as Jimmy Butler will take us. Because even Ethan said it, is that if Jimmy gets his money, they'll figure everything out afterwards. So it really comes down to the organization because I really can't blame Pat Riley like in the Miami Heat if they do want to move on, only because you don't want to move on when it's too late. So what I mean by that is we still have a good enough young core, Jaime, Jovic, Tyler, and Bam, to say, let's say that we get three first-round picks or just even two young players. We won't win now, but we'll win later. And sometimes you might have to take a step back. But this really all comes down to Jimmy Butler. Is he going to be smoking and joking, playing dominoes, riding horses, sniffing and smelling coffee? Is he going to be doing that during the regular season? Because remember, Pat Riley said it, which we didn't even know at the time. They had to sit down with Jimmy Butler and his agent, talked about missing games, and Bernie Lee even said it. Some of those games he just really didn't want to play. That's unacceptable when you're giving a guy $50 million a year. Especially when, think about it, there's no other superstar that can miss that, that amount of time or just not play. Because we won't win games. This team is not good enough. So before we, we really get into the whole Donovan Mitchell thing, we have to improve the glaring flaws on this roster and that size and scoring. There's no way that in 2024, you know, we're averaging like 89 points. and It's absolutely ridiculous. So before we even talk about Donovan Mitchell, Bam and Abao needs help, and we need scoring drastically. And if Jimmy Butler can give me 65 games where he's actually trying, I don't see how this Miami Heat team can lose. But we cannot afford a $50 million player you know, to just sit back and coast. And everyone's okay with that. And we've never done that in the Miami Heat's franchise history. Never. Even in the big three era, LeBron, Wade, and Bosch, they would play. Like, I started watching this team in the 90s. Zoe, Tim Hardaway. I mean, these were guys that would play. Uh, I, I know we said it before. To now, now in today's NBA, this whole rest management thing, I think it actually hampers players. 
Kevin Garnett said it recently in an interview, like his era, they played all the time and they kept themselves fresh and ready to go. If you're load managing and taking games off, that's actually prone to get you injured. Look at a lot of the guys say, uh, load managing, Jimmy Butler included. A lot of these guys are getting injured a lot more now. Look at these guys in the 90s, like John Stockton, Gary Payton, you know, uh, John Starks. A lot of these dudes would play 75 to 82 games year after year, and that was including long trips to the playoffs. It's because they wouldn't load manage. It's like I said in my video earlier today, maximum money deserves maximum effort. I think if we give Jimmy Butler this extension, fine. Here's your max extension, but it needs to come incentive base and performance base. You want this money, you need to make an all-star team so you can give a shit from October to February. I need you to make an all NBA team. I need you to play at least 65 games. There needs to be incentives with this contract. You just can't give them a fully guaranteed contract because we can't make this guy play 65 games. That's his choice. No matter what Pat Riley says, no matter what he tells Bernie Lee, no matter all the warnings, Jimmy Butler ain't that guy. He don't care. He's going to do what he wants. So if he wants to take off 20 games, he's gonna. So if you give him a contract and this contract says, hey, if you want $52 million this year, you need to make an all-star team. You need to play 65 games. You need to make an all-NBA defensive team. Because if you don't, that 52 becomes 27 or something like that. I don't know. But I that's what I think it needs to be. Let yeah, me I love it. Oh, let me real quick before I lose yeah. my train of thought. I love that you said it's it should be incentive based because even saying sixty five is fucking low. That's seventeen games. I know Jimmy played with Thibs and he ran him into the ground when he was in his twenties and he has all these minutes and all that crap on his legs and knees. He's correct me if I'm wrong. I don't remember him ever breaking a leg, tearing an ACL, tearing an Achilles. He hasn't had major injuries. So like, I love the minimum aspect that you're saying and also just incentivized you play 65 and always every season i don't give a shit about being all-star i get that if you're playing against someone else who maybe like you average 24 6 and 5 but someone else averaged 26 whatever and they chose him over you but like when he says i don't care that means he takes time off and he load manages and there's games where he shoots like five shots a game and we can't have that when we have trouble scoring so i love that you said that like hey you have to make one of the all-NBA teams. You have to make an all-star game because I know you don't give a shit about the the accolade or like the perception of it, but we still need you to be considered for it as a top player to carry our team as a max player. So I love that you said that. And going back to the 90s shit that I love that you said this as well, as I've mentioned before a lot, how can Grant Hill, Ernest, you probably know better because Trent, you guys are young, Martel, like this guy came up as rookie of the year, all-star and rookie of the year. As a rookie, that's very rare. That guy was like a mini LeBron as a small forward. We averaged like 28 points, 8 rebounds, and 8 assists. Beast. He had major knee, ankle, whatever injuries. He played 40 games in four years, right? And then like in his 30s, he resurrected his career with the Phoenix Suns at age 35 to 38, which is the same age as Jimmy Butler is, on bum-ass legs. He played 82, 80, and 78 games. So fuck this, Jimmy Butler needs to play 65, blah, 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 blah. No, we want you to play 75. You can miss seven games. That's fine. Wait, right? wait, wait, wait. But the problem with that is I don't think his body can even do that, to be honest with you. No, he can't. Under. I just told you Grant Hill had major. Listen, we Grant can Hill talk played about 40 games in four years. Look at, listen, look at Kawhi. Kawhi. Total. Once Kawhi plays 10 games in a row, his knee goes down. Listen, we can talk <laughs> about all the greats and what they did. He's but not Kawhi, the day, though. Listen, Bad example. Sorry to cut you off again. He tore his ACL, right? Kawhi had major I game. Hear you. Missed you. Jimmy's I hear never you. missed a full year in his life. Listen, What's his I, excuse? Listen, no. Ethan said it again too. He said it. He said he spoke to. He said he spoke to Jimmy Butler's manager, and pretty much he said, "Listen, Jimmy Butler can play at an elite level, but he cannot play seventy games." Then get him off my level. team. Then get him off my team. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's what they like, said. I'm just telling you what they said. No, but hold up. Let me say something real quick, right? You're getting paid this amount of money, and now you want a max extension, but you can't give us your full effort to help your team, your team, your team win. So that's like me, Ernest Amir, Martel. We're at works. We're, we're not in the NBA. If you don't go give your max effort, um, you think we should, like, I, I 
totally forgot the train of thought. But I think y'all get what I'm trying to say. Like, uh-huh. we're not getting replace our you in a heartbeat. You're done. That's Why what would I'm I saying. Pay you? So, Jimmy, this is this is the part that I get annoyed, right? And I know LeBron's one of one, but dude's 39 years old and played 71 games last year. There's no excuse. And mind you, mind you, he played 71 games and was still productive, playing really really good basketball. He, I think he made All NBA. There is yep. no excuse for Jimmy Butler to go out there and be like, well, I, I just, I, my, I can't, I can't, my knee. Paul George snapped his leg and came back and still. All, uh, still an all-star in this league so all that jimmy stuff I, I don't like that stuff and one thing i do want to say too right Jokic, Jokic gets that um that he you know i don't care about basketball like this and that but guess what Jokic won a championship this dude just won several mvps he's going to several all-star games you know he's performing on the court and jimmy you you should not have that attitude make the all-star game you don't gotta play play five minutes but why do you got to feel different why do you got to be different to everybody i don't care about the all-star game no more i'm too old for that have fun you don't got we see the all-star game you don't gotta play just relax and have fun with it so like all that stuff it's it's starting to frustrate me because now it's like well i want max why should we give you a max jimmy i get it you did all this and that but like the organization still gotta go this this is going on without you sooner or later so like i get it for Jimmy's side, he's like, I got to think about my future. I got to think about when I'm out of the league. You know, so I, I understand it. But, like, both sides, like, they both have some fair, valid points, man. But that, what you said, Martel, I don't care if his bo- if your body can't handle it, go. Leave my team. Leave my team. And that's why we and that's why we come at Tyler, right? His body can't handle it no more. His, and his body's breaking down young. <laughs> he's a young boy. He's never been able to handle it. Like, he went far in the bubble, but that was the bubble. That was because of COVID. Ever since then, every single season, his body breaks down. I mean, I know some of them are freak injuries. I want to see Tyler come back from it last year. But prove it to me. Show me one year that you can give me 75 games and you can give a full run in the playoffs. Because if not, the the, the proof is in the pudding. You're going to be deemed injury prone, whether those were mistakes or not. Every year, if it happens, you will be deemed injury pro. It's just facts. That's all I 60, ask. 67 it. games, Tyler Hero. He's played 60 games twice in five years. 67, 66. And he's young, so I don't think that's – that. there's no excuse for Tyler. Remember, remember when Tyler said, well, I'm in the same thing of Luca and this and that. Trey, oh, like, Trey, yes. Josh. I'll and never forget that. Yeah, never. Okay. But anyways, <laughs> I just want to hit y'all with one more question um, before we go. This is the last question. Um, so what if Jimmy does eventually end up leaving this off season and like say worse, worse comes to worse, right? Like, mm-hmm. cause I think there's still, that there's, there is a possibility that does happen, you know? Um, but do you take the Philly offer? Do you see what's like, what, what teams are offering around the league? Cause Philly can offer a lot of picks, second round picks and stuff like that. Uh, like what direction do you want to go? I know you kind of brought it up early. You asked me that question, Ernest, of like, you know, can we still make the playoffs? But, like, do you want a star player out of it or return a role player that's a star player? Like, draft picks, like, what do you want out of it? Um, I mean, it's it, it's going to hard get, It's gonna be really hard getting something for them. The, re- the reason why the Philly trade makes sense is because they have $67 million in cap space. So you could actually trade Jimmy there and not take back any players. You could just take draft picks and send Jimmy there and get those $50 million off your book. So that's why it makes a lot of sense. If if it's going to be another team, it's going to be really tough because a lot of teams are going to be in the apron, so you can't aggregate trades. The Heat are a first apron trade, a first apron team, so you got to follow that 100,000 by 125% rule. I know it's boring, but it's what's going on. Um, so Philly makes sense. I think if it – like. I know Wes and you guys were saying that it's a bad situation regardless. I don't think that. I think it's positive regardless because if you keep Jimmy with this team and let's say we run it back, God, God, no. But if we do, if the team can give you a healthy season and if Tyler could commit to coming off the bench, I think we got to run in us. But if you trade Jimmy and you get a bunch of draft picks, now we have draft capital. And, bro, I actually believe in Jaime Hawkins and Duncan Robinson and Terry Rozier with Tyler, Bam, with Spo as the coach. And then if you lose Jimmy, now you can bring back Caleb Martin. Now you can bring back Haywood Highsmith. Now you can get this team together, figure it out, maybe make a trade for Donovan Mitchell by trading Tyler Hero or making maybe making a trade for DeJounte Murray. Jimmy's not the only piece you move. So if we move Jimmy, I know that this organization would actually make it work, and I think we'd still be a playoff team. 
And we yeah. have those picks to trade for a star. Bam. Bam. Those picks we get from Philly, you can package those. Now, instead of Donovan Mitchell, you can maybe get something bigger because everybody wants to play with Bam. Everybody wants to play with Bam. And if you keep Hawkes, those are your selling points, bro. I, I think we're good whether we keep Jimmy or not because Jimmy, bro, if we keep him, fine. We're going to be stuck these next few years, but at least we can try to contend. But if we trade him now, hey, the, 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 the possibility is endless with this team. Yeah, I can go either way. I, I could be content with keeping Jimmy and playing the Donovan Mitchell game. Dep obviously, it, the ball's in his court with the extension. Yep. And then if he does sign it, that would suck because then we have to obviously talk about the Trey Young route, the DeJounte route, like the Ingram route, and these other guys that are not going to necessarily. No. Exactly. We don't. I mean, but I'm not like. <laughs> I mean, but I'm willing to shake it up. Like we got. You got to try Let's different have fun. things. Let's have fun. Let's have fun. But I, I'm. I would okay. So if Jimmy left, let's say whether it's he requests a trade because I, I'm not getting an extension, or Miami's like, oh shit, maybe we got to trade him now just in case that happens. Strike while the iron's hot. They could do the Philly route where they can get you know three picks and no players, and then they they have a clean slate. But again, is Donovan Mitchell available? Who's available next year? We have to look at the free agency list. There's not a there's not many unrestricted free agents. There's a lot of guys, Jason Tatum, Kyrie Irving. And a few other names that are up there, Paul George, potentially again. But you'll have the space without the Jimmy. Yeah, you'll have the space and you can trade more draft picks. Yeah. Send a guy like Tyler out of your team and then go after a Tatum. Yep. Oh, how great would that be bringing Tatum here? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. But the guys I just mentioned have a player option, so they would have to opt out. But they at will. that point, it's not even going to get to that point. They're going to they're gonna extend them before that. But anyway, I like that option of just like having those picks and hypothetically Donovan doesn't extend. It does sucks that we can't put Jimmy Bam and Donovan together, but then you have a new phase. You have that rebuild with Bam and then use those picks. And to your point, Ernest, a Tyler, a Terry, and we have more picks. So we don't have to necessarily give a Hawkes or even a Jaime or Hawkes or a Jovich. Who knows what that package looks like, but use that for Donovan or the flip side. I kind of do want players in return, possibly if it's the right fit and the right guys, if the Knicks are hypothetically, they could be considered one of the unknown teams because of Thibs. Obviously, they need another player to add to the mix with Brunson. Hypothetically, and they have a bunch of picks. They have four or five picks but also. They can give us two picks. Julius Randle makes only 30. And Mitchell Robinson makes 15. That's 45. We still can get another player if we want or even get five, six million in cap space, right? So that's not the worst package, getting Randle... And getting Mitchell, getting a, two bigs and picks for Jimmy, I don't know. There, that's obviously just a hypothetical. I can go with either route. I don't know which one I prefer. The you know the four draft picks in space versus players and picks, but who knows, man? There's a lot of interesting things that can happen this off season. You never fucking know. And there could be a team that comes out of the woodwork for Donovan Mitchell if he doesn't extend. Same with Jimmy Butler, just like the Bucks did, right? Just like the Cavs did for Mitchell. You never know. Like it's all. It's all, yeah, speculation at this point. Yeah, I think this offseason is going to be way more interesting than last year's because last year's was boring. It was just like Damian Lillard, watch every day. Is he going to do it? Is he not going to do it? And then, mm -hmm. All the time. But this offseason is going to be like, is Jimmy going to get traded? Are we going to get Donovan Mitchell? Can we get DeJounte Murray? Can we get this dude? Like the draft. Like I think it's going to be a lot more interesting this offseason. So we're going to have a lot more for you guys. So stay tuned. Yes, sir. Martel, any last words? Make sure you guys words. like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you, guys. We'll hey, see you soon. I will say Luca and um, is a free agent <laughs> in 2026. I'm just saying. If he okay. wins the championship, though, he's not Ooh, going anywhere. But what if he doesn't? And what if he becomes disgruntled? You see, Trench is planted the seeds right there. Uh, my saying. man be thinking. My man be don't don't sell it short because 2026. If that happens, y'all better go ahead and let give my trend like 10,000 freaking subscribers <laughs> immediately for that one, yo. Come on, I love so, it. So, but that's the okay. So now we're talking again. None of us hopefully should want Boston to win. I got I'm I'm rooting for Dallas over Boston, but if Boston somehow wins, which would be horrible, and Dallas wins <laughs> guess, or loses, guess 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 who's guess who's our D Wade that recruits Jimmy to the Heat? We're gonna have Drogic, aka the Dragon, is gonna hit up his boy, yep. his Slovenian boy, and he's gonna tell him to come to the Miami Heat. So he's gonna be the advocate for that. So who knows? Could be could be super interesting. We'll see. Right. But anyway, I'll, I'll pull it for Dallas, but I want to see a good finals. Just sh give me some good games. That's it. Fuck that. Dallas and four. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, guys, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Miami Heat Network, Team to Beat Miami Heat, Miami Heat Zone Podcast, and Miami Heat Talk. And that is enough said. Thank you, guys.